So looking at uh, turboprop propellers, there are three main companies that build these that you'll find today. And so the first one, Hartzell, you're probably familiar with, right? We looked at Hartzell uh, when we were looking at smaller. They build a lot of props for smaller aircraft, and then they've they branched into the um, kind of medium, small to medium sized turboprops. Hamilton Standard, uh, which you guys saw the video, Jeremy did the lecture with you, did the ham, the ham standard, the old school ham standard stuff. This is the, their modern stuff. They make some, some of the more modern props out there. And then, let's see if I can get the right light switch here. There we go, that should help. Uh, and then the third one there, and while well, Ham Standard, Hamilton Standard, um, you'll see them as Hamilton Standard. You'll see them as Hamilton Sunstrand. They were bought by, you know, they merged companies, so a lot of these companies have changed. And then today, they're, um, now it's called Collins Aerospace Propeller Systems, part of the same Collins that makes like avionics equipment and that kind of thing. But when you look at the design and people are talking about how these work, you'll see people talk about them as still as a Hamilton standard propeller, even though they're technically Collins nowadays. And then the third company you'll see down there is uh, Dowdy, or you'll also hear it referred to as Dowdy Rodol. D-O-W-T-Y, and then Rodol is R-O-T-O-L, if I remember right. So Dowdy or Dowdy Rodol props, you'll see those. And here are some Hartzell propellers. You can see three, four, five, and six blade. And all these manufacturers make them in various sizes. So, so Hartzell, the first one, these are um, lightweight turbine series propellers. And these are very similar. They're almost identical to their, um, their turbo, or sorry, their, their reciprocating engine propellers. Okay, these use a split aluminum hub and they have an internal pitch change mechanism. Um, but you can see they do have external uh, fly weights on the outside of them. So that provides feathering. So they're, they tend to be, um, the, they use oil to go to a fine pitch. They use uh, the fly weights to go to a coarse pitch. Uh, and they're available for your small to mid-range turboprops, maxing out somewhere around 1,650 horsepower. And they make them in all different sizes. And you can get, there's options for them. Some of them might be feathering. Some of them are feathering and reversing. They can be aluminum blade or composite blade. Uh, and in some cases, they can be used for aerobatic purposes as well. Other things you'll notice on them, they're fairly, in this version, fairly classic blade shape. They do have de-ice, you know, integral de-ice boots on them. Almost all of these propellers are going to have de-ice boots on them because they are an aircraft that are certified to fly in the known icing conditions. They have a steel hub series. So Hartzell makes a steel hub series. And these are a little bit bigger and designed for um, large piston and then small to mid-range turboprops. Okay. Uh, and these are very, very similar. They're pretty much the same as the, um, the Hartzell propellers where they have that external pitch change mechanism on it. And so this is like what's on the King Air, for instance. Okay. Their HC series, uh, our steel hub. Uh, and again, they can be three, four, or five blades. They can be feathering or not, aluminum or composite, and they can come in aerobatic. So these are you know, the same as the Hartzell uh, essentially compact and steel hub propellers that you would find on your smaller aircraft. And again, they're not going up to the largest turboprop. They tend to be mid-size and smaller uh, if you find these on a turboprop aircraft. Yeah. There, you really don't see, I can't think of a turboprop that uses a two-blade propeller. Um, you, know, you have the ones that you have them on piston aircraft, but I can't. I'm not familiar with one that uses a two-blade. I'm not saying they're not out there, uh, but you know we're trying to transfer the whole. The propeller is trying to turn that torque into thrust by moving air, and the more blades you have, the more it's going to be able to do that. The more efficiently it'll be able to do that. Uh, but you know the 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 more blades you have, the more power it takes just to get it spinning as well, and so. 
I think. Well, they do add more blades. These are more expensive aircraft, so they can add those blades. They do have the extra power to be able to drive a bigger multi-blade propeller. So I just don't think the economics work for a two-blade. They could probably make one, but I'm not personally familiar with any of them. And then Hartzell has a separate series they use for their large turboprops. So these are upwards of 2,100 horsepower. Okay? And, and, you know, large horsepower, you know, we're saying 2,180 horsepower. That's all well and good. We'll see some ones later from Dowdy and um, from Collins or from uh, AM Standard that can go upwards of almost 6,000 horsepower. So these still are, relatively speaking, they're not the largest turboprop aircraft out there that are going to use Hartzell. Hartzell really is more focused on those smaller, medium to smaller, but they, they can go on some large stuff, but it's the smaller end of the large turboprops. These are a split aluminum hub. These are their most modern series. They're the newest split ones. They've moved into these over time. Um, they've kind of moved their way up to bigger propellers. Uh, but because of that, these are your split aluminum hubs, so lightweight hub. They're trying to do weight savings. Um, and then they use composite blades. And just these are all going to be feathering, reversing. Um, they also have pitch locking, which is uh, if you're using it on a thick shaft turboprop, that's what's going to prevent it from going to feather on shutdown. Uh, so that when you go to restart that, that thick shaft turbine engine, you're not going to have a ton of air resistance and potentially over -temp the engine. Uh, and these get into where they have dual acting, synchronizing, and synchrophasing system. Okay, so these more complex, these larger propellers, uh, this is where we can add those other systems. Again, that's not part of the propeller itself, uh, but they are a system acting on the propeller um, in order to get them spinning the same speed. And there are, even the, early, you know, the steel hub, you're going to find uh, synchronizing systems on most of these. Uh, the bigger ones are where you really get into the synchro phasing system, where it's not just uh, synchronizing the RPM, but also synchronizing blade position side to side. I don't know why my start bar doesn't want to go away there. Anyways. When we get into Hamilton Standard, they also have uh, three basic categories of propellers that you'll see out there. Um, and again, this is Collins has since bought them, so now it's Collins Aerospace Propeller Systems. They couldn't keep it, keep it easy. But these are large, um, medium, large. So some very large piston engine aircraft and then small all the way up to some of your largest turboprops. Uh, going upwards of over 4,000 shaft horsepower. And these are, here they have three, uh, four, and six. As far as I know, I've never heard of or been able to find a five-bladed propeller uh, from Hamilton Standard, you know, where, um, uh, where Hartzell does do a five-bladed propeller. Um, but uh, options on these, what you'll see, uh, some of them are feathering, the older designs, and the designs that are meant to be used on uh, piston engine or small turboprops are gonna be, they're all gonna be, for the most part, feathering. They're gonna be constant speed. The reversing tends to be on the larger turboprop aircraft. And then, uh, again, aluminum or composite blades on these. You never see like a wood blade in any of these. So they have what are kind of referred to as their legacy steel hub things, and you can see uh, four of them right here. Now they're a little blurry, they're hard to see, um, but you'll notice they're very club shaped. The blades on these ones tend to be very wide, almost rectangular. Uh, and that was an older NACA airfoil that was used, and, and I, off the top of my head, I don't remember what it was called, which specific airfoil. But it was almost, it was an airfoil that almost was more like a wing than an airfoil that would have been dedicated to a propeller blade. It's a very simple airfoil, you can see, being a, it's rectangular, a rectangular blade that has a fairly consistent airfoil from root to tip area. Three blades here. Uh, you, you can see I've broken it down into two different types of, of horsepower. 
you've got shaft horsepower. These are your normal running, and then takeoff shaft horsepower. So a lot of these propellers have the ability to be run at a uh, slightly higher power setting during takeoff, but you cannot run at that power setting consistently because it would overstress the propeller blades and the hub. And so you can use that to get off the ground. Once you're off the ground, you need to pull back that power going in there uh, in order to uh, extend the life or, or make the life of the propeller not, not have early fatigue damage. Um, but these are feathering. They're not reversing on their three-blade version. Uh, and you can see they run. And as we look through these, you'll see RPM RPM and diameter tend to kind of fit together. So obviously the bigger the RPM, or the bigger the diameter, the slower the RPM that they max out at, which makes sense because we're worried about the tip speed and going supersonic. One thing that's interesting with these is they, rather than making a bunch of different ones back in the day, they said, we'll make a bigger propeller and if someone needs a slightly smaller propeller, we'll just kind of carve off the ends of the blades. We'll shorten them. And so this one, these Hamilton, these legacy steel hub props, they actually have the ability to, from the manufacturer, they, they take the same part number and they'll make it shorter to make a smaller diameter propeller. And they're really the only one you see. And, and you only see that happen with aluminum blade propellers. Okay. Um, their three-bladed ones are feathering, their four-bladed ones are feathering and reversing, like what's shown here on the C-130. Um, and you can see that range, 10 and a half to 14 feet for the three-bladed, uh, but slightly smaller on the four-bladed, 11 and a half to 13 and a half feet max. Again, that's why that range is there. You can, they can shorten them. There. It's, it's kind of an oddball. That's the only one I've, I've seen where they can do that. Hamilton Standard Sense has come out with a more modern steel hub air, uh, propeller in the form of this is a steel hub, but now they use a composite blade or composite blades. And they like Kevlar. They tend to use a Kevlar shell with a graphite spar. So, or a carbon, graphite carbon are kind of interchangeable. So, and they actually are a, a two spar. There's two spars running inside these blades. They still have an aluminum. Um, they still have an aluminum uh, cuff or area that hooks into the hub, but uh, you're going to then go to a composite blade. And you can see they've gone to a. They start to go into the blade is not just a square panel anymore, but it starts to have, you know, kind of a curvature or a sweep to it. And the most extreme version of these you'll hear referred to as a scimitar blade where they have this big sweep from the root to the tip. And that makes them quieter and more efficient. Uh, but these can be anywhere around, they're typically around 13 feet in diameter. This is an ATR-73 uh, aircraft that it's mounted on here. I think those are PW-1000 engines. I'm not 100% sure what they, what they made them to there. Uh, but those are all feathering and reversing at this point. Anything modern like this, they're pretty much going to be, be have the ability to feather and reverse. The third type of uh, propeller that comes from Hamilton Standard is a, now we go to an aluminum hub with composite blade. And these are a lower horsepower. So where, you know, where these ones, where the steel hub with the Kevlar blades could go upwards of 3,000 shaft horsepower, aluminum are limited. They're a little bit lower, 2,750 horsepower is what they max out at. Um, but now you have an aluminum hub. In this case, they use a fiberglass blade, but they still have an aluminum spar running up the middle of it. They're not a pure square shape. They're not quite as exotic as these. They don't have the, the kind of swept tip as much, uh, but they're not quite as square and club-like as the steel hub version. Okay. Um, and these are all four-bladed. Every version of these is a four-blade prop. They just have um, essentially two different sizes uh, that run at two different RPMs and two different shaft horsepower ranges. 
Okay, so you've got your slightly smaller ones, smaller aircraft that maxed out at 2,000 shaft horsepower. The 13 foot diameter, a little bit bigger one, maxes out 2,500 standard shaft horsepower, 2,750 takeoff shaft horsepower. Okay. Again, they're all feathering and reversing because they're going to be used on these larger aircraft where they need the ability to have the propellers aid in stopping and slowing down. Okay. The third manufacturer that we're going to be looking at in detail is Dowdy or Dowdy Rodol. And Dowdy makes some of the largest propellers out there. Uh, they, they make from small turboprops. Um, they're, they're one of the options you can get on like the 34 passenger Saab 340, uh, but they're also on the Q400, which is a 50 passenger airplane. Uh, so these are large pistons, small to large turboprops, maxing out at somewhere around 4,100 horsepower. And again, feathering or feathering and reversing, and they have various series that are aluminum or composite. So their steel hub, again, could be considered kind of their legacy or their older propellers. This is a Vickers Viscount. You can see it's a very old turboprop. Uh, and these are, when I'm talking about those more club-shaped blades, you can see what I'm talking about right here. So they're very square at the tips. They're pretty much straight uh, from, the, uh, from the base to the tip. Uh, these are a steel hub with an aluminum blade. They can take a fair amount of horsepower. You know, the larger ones can go over 2,700 horsepower. Smaller ones used on, um, you know, so smaller ones like this, the three-bladed, where it's constant speed, no feathering or reverse, maybe used on some of your smallest uh, turboprops, single-engine turboprops. You would never see a non-feathering on a twin turboprop. Because you've got it for, if you have a twin turboprop, if you can't feather it and you have to shut down an engine, that air resistance would cause too much yaw. It would cause the plane to spin. Uh, so it, you're not going to find that on a twin. It'll be on a single engine turboprop. Or more commonly, those are used on some of your largest uh, recip engines, you know, like your IO 540s or your, you know, large, real big, uh, high displacement engines. Uh, but constant speed, no feathering or reversing. The four blade versions of these are um, are feathering, but they are not reversing. Okay. Again, they're an older design, so something like this Viscount, where it probably could have benefited from having reverse. It was before reversing was really a thing. Their next series. Kind of the next in time, and theirs are more of a time. They've kind of, kind of gone out of time. Uh, are their uh, aluminum hub with aluminum blades? And so this right here uh, is a picture. This is a twin commander. Okay, this has a TFE three thirty or excuse me TPE three thirty one engine. So we have one of these engines over in the lab down there in the turbines lab area. Uh, and again, these come in three or four blade varieties. They are all feathering and reversing. Uh, they, you know, the smaller ones can be used. Uh, in some cases, it's, it's, you can get a constant speed version where there is no feathering or reversing of the three bladed variety. And that would typically be used on a single engine uh, recip aircraft. But then the the feathering and reversing would be used on your any of your turboprops, and especially if it's a twin turboprop or a twin recip, a large twin recip aircraft. Eight and a half to nine feet in diameter. The four bladed version up to 1100 shaft takeoff shaft horsepower. Uh, and those are all going to be feathering and reversing. Okay, because the assumption at that point, you it's a big enough engine, you know, you're not going to have a thousand horsepower recip engine, and so they're pretty much going to be on something that's turbine driven. So. The final uh, Dowdy prop we're going to look at is their aluminum hub with composite blade. These are their most modern, uh, their most modern propellers. And these are pretty much exclusively for medium and large turboprops. Their large turboprop varieties are designed, to, their largest ones can go up to 5,071 shaft horsepower. 
uh, of input power. And the composite blades, GFRP and CFRP, anyone know what that is? What? What's GFRP? So GFR, what if I say glass fiber reinforced plastic? No? Sounds good. How about fiberglass? Okay, that's that's the long name for fiberglass. So they're they're fiberglass with a carbon fiber, carbon fiber reinforced plastic. So they're they're fiberglass blades with essentially a carbon fiber spar inside of them. And a lot of these, the, it, this, this picture doesn't show it very well, um, but they do have a bit of a sweep. Some of them are even more extreme. There's a version that they put on to some military transports. I don't remember which one it is. That's got real big scimitar to it. Uh, I think it's the newer version of T-130. I don't know, but... This, this one's a Q-400 right here. So it's a passenger, 50 passenger... Uh, passenger, 50 passenger turboprop. And these are all, again, all feathering and reversing because anything they're going to be installed on is going to be a twin or four engine turboprop aircraft. So they have to have that ability to feather uh, in the event of an engine failure and they have to, you're going to use that reversing when the aircraft lands in order to shorten the rollout distance. Um, so yeah, this is this is a they call it the official name De Havilland DHC-8-400, also known as the Q-400, and a lot of people still call it a Bombardier Q-400. It was originally a De Havilland aircraft. De Havilland went defunct. Bombardier bought it. Bombardier made it for a long time. Bombardier decided they wanted to get out of commercial aircraft, and a company was formed called like the De Havilland Holding Company to switch them back over to that. But it's, it's, it's a different to Havilland than that originally designed it and built it. So those are gonna be the biggest ones. So that is the intro and that's as far as I wanna go today so we don't get in the middle of anything when class wraps up. <laughs>